problems here, but some of us have decided not to try to move out of the neighborhood. Therefore, we made sure that things are kept pretty tight in our block. That block in the 1980s in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. The Bergen Street Community Garden was just beginning to grow. Soon, it would provide a safe space for all ages in an area with a complicated landscape. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dana Tyler, and welcome to A Look Back. We're highlighting memorable moments from the CBS2 archives, where then reporter Vic Miles, he's there screen left, shined lights on the communities, the people and the challenges faced four decades ago Go. The similarities between then and now are striking. As for the differences, this safe haven in Bed-Stuy where drugs were once sold just steps away from the garden, now serves the area as a destination for neighborhood gatherings. The Garden Oasis was originally built on a combination of city-owned and private land. Vic takes us to the intersection of Nostrand Avenue and Bergen Street. Here they have the salads, and they have tomatoes over there, and they have green peppers. Mm -hmm. And in here, that's where they sit for a time. They rest and stuff. Relaxation. And this is the garden that Bergen Street built. The city helped them clear five rubble-strewn lots, and the folks along our block turned it into an Eden. We got a, a community garden here that we're very proud of, and uh, it was a love of labor to put it together. President of a very active block association, Walton Winston, and his neighbors have preserved and beautified our block, making Bergen Street something very special here in the heart of Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. There are many problems here, but some of us have decided not to try to move out of the neighborhood. Therefore, we made sure that things are kept pretty tight in our block. We have the kind of, we have the kind of people here that will get out and do. The garden's not the only thing that's been growing here on our block. Behavioral roots took hold generations ago, and it's nurtured here. Values passed along from old to young. Well, they all every now and then start straying in the wrong direction, you know, taking the fruit off the fruit stand and all that kind of stuff. But uh, after a while of talking to them and everything, they seem to like. He's more like a role model. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, when, when we ever do something wrong, you know, he's there to say, you know, you're not doing the right thing. And now you're trying to pass that on. Yeah. Bernard Foster is one of the finest products of the rich harvest along Bergen Street. And you can feel his good influences bearing fruit among the very young here in the garden. And what are you going to be when you grow up? A doctor. Why? Because when people get sick, I'm going to help them. Now, it would be simplicity to sit down and write rhymes that are all about me. I said enough about me and my fabulous mic. Let's get into matters of love and life. A high school graduate and an office worker on his way to college, Bernard Foster writes and memorizes rap. He was born and bred here, and he knows our block and the dangers of the tough streets outside of Eden. I can only remember one failure. A what friend. Happened? Well, he's, he's not doing the right thing. He's like into robbing and stealing and, you know, uh -huh. it's, it's ridiculous. Uh -huh. And you can't help him? You just can't, can't help reach him. him. Can't reach him. I see him so much on television, I have to shake hands with him. <laughs> so glad I live to see you live. <laughs> Long before the garden, the block nurtured a grand spirit. She's known as everybody's grandma, Bertha Stevens. Um, so, yes, I, and, and you know, I'll tell you all the truth. These young men, they mind me like a mother. If I see them doing something I don't like, I say, look, you know that's wrong? Yes, Grandma. Yes, Grandma. I say, I don't want to see it no more. OK, Grandma. Yeah, the pride runs deep here on Bergen Street, a garden born out of ashes and tight-knit families. Folks here on our block have created a bit of an urban oasis here in Bedford-Stuyvesant. But it's never all that easy. The news isn't always good up there on the corner of Nostrand Avenue. From where you're standing, how long would it take you to get some? Five minutes. Yeah, Two minutes. you can get crack on our block. From where I'm standing, it won't take long. Not 10 seconds, I don't think. Still, concerned homeowners and that magic garden is giving kids on our block a chance at a real future. So it's something glad to meet all of y'all. <laughs> and we pray for each other so this world will get to be a better world so we can raise our children. Till next week on our block, Vic Miles, Channel 2 News.
We were curious to go back, honored to go back to this block in Bed-Stuy to check on the community garden and the children and all the people who believed in it. Joining us now is Hannah Klieger, our Brooklyn community reporter. You went back. You went back to Bergen Street, which I think is so cool and which is really what our block and the joy of the series is all about. What, what was it like? It was so exciting to see the footage from the 1980s, right? And then go back and see the exact same block, the exact same houses, the exact same area in the community, and it's thriving. It's green, the, you know, the, the garden is overflowing with roses and hydrangeas and daylilies. And we even went up to the roof, uh, to the top floor of one of the brownstones across the street to get that same aerial shot that the we saw hand? in the beginning. Yeah, in oh. the piece. Just again, to, to show, to paint that picture that the block is so different, mm -hmm. but also so similar to what it was 40 years ago. So the garden is flowers, is it is vegetables too for the community members to eat? Yeah, so what's interesting is they do, they rent little plots of land for okay. $25 a year to residents in the community who can come and grow their own vegetables. They say that there's so many vegetables that grow there that Hazel, who is one of the original founders, we're going to hear more about her, <laughs> yeah. she um, gives them out to the community because she just grows so many tomatoes that she says she has to give them away. Oh, that is, uh, <laughs> no matter what your neighbor, is that Hazel right there? That's Hazel right there, yeah, she's in her 80s, she's one of the original founders of um, this garden. And and she's one of the remaining original founders of 40 yeah. some years later. So what is so great about this is that you were able to show Hazel Vic's story from 40 years ago. She was in that story and we, we have to see her reaction. Take a look. That is still this here. Is the Mr. Stevens, he died. See what we used to have he right here. The steps. He was on this block about two years ago. He's a big man. This, this guy? Him, yeah. He lived in somewhere. He came on the block to look for somebody. Bernard Foster died. He died too. Miss Stevens, her husband was just I was a baby when I joined him. They were all older people. You recognized all the people in the video. Yeah, it's so funny, yeah. The young people too, you recognize Yeah, and them? I don't know where they are. I don't know if they're alive. What was it like to see that? It's sad because those were the people with passion. They fought for something that wasn't here. It was a legacy. But that's nice that you have that. Hannah, that is that's so special to be able to talk with her and hear her perspective. She even she got emotional at one point there, and she was talking about all the people who came through this garden, who grew up around it, who helped grow the garden and grew themselves. And um, you know, she's one of the last original members. There's one more, she said, um, who's in her, who's I think uh, 99 or 100 years old, oh but goodness. no longer able to enjoy the garden. So 40 years is a long time for a community garden to survive. From the 1980s to 2023, how did it survive? People really care. People really care. Hazel really cares. Um, and people kept fighting for it. There was even a time in recent history, in the past 10 years, Hazel told me the story of how the garden was almost lost to this community. A garden born out of rubble. Five empty lots destroyed after a fire in the 1970s. A tight-knit community came together to create something beautiful. The garden suits the community. We have had like, what, five weddings here. We have had church come and give the service here on Sunday evenings. We have had christenings. We have had engagements. Locals can rent a plot of land for $25 a year to grow their own veggies. We get a lot of tomatoes. Yeah, I have to give away too many. But there was a time recently when this Eden was almost lost. A records mistake about 10 years ago caused it to lose its nonprofit and tax exempt status. We fell through the cracks. Nobody recertified us. Two years later, when investors saw nobody was paying taxes, Hurley says they came knocking. How much money they could give me and they want to do the land and what they would do. Well, there's not my land. I can't use that money. And there were more than one, and it was so much that somebody, when I look through and I see who they are, I don't answer the doorbell. To prevent that kind of mistake again, neighbors handed the deed over to the Brooklyn Queens Land Trust, a nonprofit that works to protect the garden, make sure it remains here in perpetuity. I know in my lifetime, the garden going to be here. I'm still here to fight. That's really thinking ahead.
right? Yeah. Covering all bases. Trying to prevent that from happening again. Like, mm -hmm. she's like, as long as I'm here, like, this will be here. And hopefully people care enough that it will stay here even after she's gone. In Vic's story, he talked about drugs. I, I believe that one young man says, when Vic asked, how soon can, how quickly can you get drugs? He said, nine, ten seconds. Yeah. Which is sad and scary. Um, talk about that problem then and now. Oh, actually, before we even showed Hazel the Vic Miles piece, she mentioned that, you know, drugs were, were a big problem in the community at the time. And she, you know, I was asking her how the neighborhood changed, and that's what she had said, that um, crack was a big problem. Now, you know, I asked her about it and how uh, the neighborhood is now, and she says that really the big problem they're dealing with now is gun violence, unfortunately. So, um, you know, every community has its challenges, and that's, sure. and that's the one that she's noticing now. So we've talked about her and how special she is and was to getting this started. Other people you met, uh, who've come into it since it was first started? Who touched you? Who, who, who's, um, you know, part of it, but also just a personality as well? Yeah, so um, actually, while we were there, it was so interesting because Hazel just seems to attract people. She's <laughs> like a flower and butterflies oh, just kind of come around. Metaphor, this yeah. Is great. So while she was there, there were young people peeking in and saying, hey, Miss Hazel, hey, Miss Hazel. And one of the um, neighbors who lives down the road from the garden um, is this gentleman who grew up for the past 50 years next to the garden and used to help out. Um, and he spoke with us about how much the neighborhood has changed in terms of real estate prices and in terms of, um, you know, now the neighborhood is considered Crown Heights. They believe, you know, that this neighborhood is Crown Heights. So kind of the boundaries of the neighborhoods change a little bit with time. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, another young man, and we're about to hear from him uh, in a soundbite that I got, but he had mentioned that he grew up around this garden and was so obsessed with it and fell in love with gardening and now works as a landscaper. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Take a listen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear what he has to say. It was amazing. I, I would be at home and thinking about what I'm going to be doing here the next day. So it was it was that type of energy, you know, towards the garden. Like I said, there's not much outdoor spaces, you know, and this is like the closest park like this that I, I was around. So it was always good to come and volunteer my services, you know. 200,000 to 2 million. <laughs> so the prices, that's what has changed a lot. The prices is going crazy. Price is going crazy. Yeah. But still the demand, the love, the pride. Yeah. To be there and to keep keep that proud history in yeah. that bedsty. Yeah. Lock. And one of the things she had mentioned is that there were a lot of homeowners there at the time. Now it's a lot of renters. So the people who kind of stuck in that community for a long time, that era has kind of passed. It's a lot of like young families coming in who can't afford the you know million dollars um, that it costs to buy a, a townhouse there sure. now or, or a, um, a, a brownstone. But um, yeah, she says it's still it's still the, the pillar in that in that area. One thing I want to say, too, is just about putting your hands in dirt. You know, the cycle of a garden is a cycle of life. Yeah. And, and there's just something so beautiful. Um, I think that's so special too. So the joy is there all year round. Yeah, and well, again, like these neighbors who are peeking in, were saying, you know, there are parks, there are parks, but no parks where you can really dig in the dirt and kind of plant things yourselves. I don't yes. think you know the parks department would be happy about that, but here you can, and and people do. The other thing is, um, as I mentioned, this neighborhood, you know, now they they say they're in Crown Heights. They've really built um, kind of a, a following, a cult following in this garden. For example, there was a tourist from Germany. She told me who came a couple of years ago, fell in love with the garden and built them an arbor that stands there now. Um, there were people who donated signs that say, you know, happiness is being in the garden or <laughs> love gardening and things yes. like that. So kind of it's kind of become a collaborative effort. You know, people know about this garden. They care about this garden. They give they they come in and they, they enjoy the garden, but they also give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's free. there's a community pantry there. There's a little free the library, book the bookstore, yeah, the little book um, shelf outside. Yes. Hannah Klieger, our community journalist in Brooklyn, a thrill to uh, take us there now. I really appreciate that. Um, and I know our viewers do too, our block.
then and now. Thank you for the update on this block. Next week, we'll take you back in time to the South Bronx in the 1980s, where residents of Lyman Place give credit to one incredible woman for transforming the block. From after school activities for children to educational programs and mentoring, Miss Hetty Fox planted the seeds for this neighborhood to grow into what it is today. We'll take a look back at her legacy. Thank you for watching A Look Back. Find more uncovered footage at cbsnewyork.com. I'm Dana Tyler. See you next time.